Welcome back to Advent of Test. Today is day 14. We're over halfway already. How did that happen? So today we're going to work on a pattern that I call open lens stars because it uses open triangle twists with the same structure and general setup of lens stars. And as I hinted yesterday, this is possible because our rhombus is spaced one spacing further out. So in this hexagon rhombus triangle rhombus tiling, the spacing of the rhombus from the hexagon determines what triangle you put next. This might seem a little strange because what we were doing with the hexagon triangle rhombus triangle tiling is putting whatever the heck rhombus we wanted on whatever the heck side we wanted um, when we had our triangles in. So those are some differences between these two arrangements of twists, arrangements of shapes that um, you can take into consideration that give you more or less flexibility when you're designing patterns. But for today, we're focused on folding this one, not designing all of the possibilities. So let's dive in. I've chosen to put the open hexagon on the back side. So I'm going to choose to start on the side of my paper with softer grid lines. As always with the open hexagon, I'll start with a pleat, one spacing up from the corner on the right hand side, pass it to my left hand and continue with that same pleat all the way around. And here I'm using cues both from the central hexagon and from the edge of the paper as I set up my remaining pleats. Once I've got that hexagon in place, I'm going to squash it. And yes, this is a good place to pause if you do not have your hexagon yet, which let's face it, if you are new to tessellations, you will not have your central hexagon yet. I understand that and it is fine. Um, so next we've got our open hexagon. We're going to flip over to the other side. Last time we had two spacings to reach the fat corner of our rhombus. This time we have one, two, three. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that position three spacings. This gives us the central diamond of our rhombus because the through line needs to come out this way. And so I can then go ahead and create my rhombus. And lay it down and squash it. I'm creating my rhombus in the exact same way that I did yesterday. And the difference is what happens next. So just like yesterday, the triangle corner is right up against the rhombus corner. But unlike yesterday, we have a open triangle instead of a closed triangle. So that means that my valley fold comes right up to that rhombus tip. My mountain fold is one spacing further up and I maintain that this is a through line of the next rhombus. But what's different here is I'm going to set this triangle up as a closed triangle so that I can lay it down flat to squash my next rhombus. And only then will I shift the pleat instead of going straight to the corner of the hexagon, I'll shift it one kind of up and to the left and get my open triangle instead. And this needs a little bit of manipulating because one corner is right at the edge of the paper but we'll see that multiple times as we go through. So again, I'm setting up a closed triangle, one spacing from the corner of my rhombus, the through line corner of my rhombus 
to set the through line for the next rhombus and set up the next rhombus entirely. Squashing that rhombus and then taking this free pleat of the triangle, shifting it over one grid spacing, putting the valley on the far side. And now I've got my open triangle up and ready for squashing. Next, I'll rotate around and do exactly the same thing again, setting up a three-way intersection that will lay fat, flat one spacing from the corner of my existing rhombus, which sets up the through line of the new rhombus, leaving me to find the free diagonal of this rhombus, which I will squash and then move the free pleat of the triangle over one spacing, putting the valley on the far side. Or as Ben Parker would say, I'm drifting the pleat of the triangle. And then I will continue on my merry way and do it again. So setting up the triangle gives me the positioning for the rhombus. I could also use my rhombus positioning from the beginning, but I prefer to let the pleats tell me what to do instead of counting whenever possible, because there's always a chance that I'll count wrong, but the pleats are never wrong. So setting it up with the pleats, I'm going to need my rhombus in here. And this time, instead of the three-way intersection that lays flat uh, right next to, well, it is one spacing from the corner of the new rhombus, if you can see that. But I'm going to go ahead and make that an open triangle because it would get in the way either way I have it. So I may as well have it as an open triangle first and not need to move anything. So why are we doing open triangles instead of closed triangles here if we could just have closed triangles and have the same spacing? Well, that's because we're not just thinking about this medallion shape. Uh, we're not thinking about just this loop around the hex gun. We're also thinking about the broader pattern. And so in the broader pattern, this triangle needs to fill a threefold rotationally symmetric position. And so each corner of it has to act exactly the same with respect to the neighboring rhombi. And that's why I'm using the open triangle here instead of a closed triangle centered over here. So that's what's going on with this piece with this pattern and I hope you enjoy folding it and I'm looking forward to seeing what you fold. Um, please post with hashtag advent of tests and happy folding. I will see you tomorrow when we are introducing the last twist that we're going to finish out the entire time with just the twist we've seen already and this one more, the open rhombus. So. Happy folding. I will see you then.